Hello and good morning and welcome to First Chapter Fun. A uh, few technical issues there with Instagram again. Naughty Instagram! But I'm up and running on both Facebook and Instagram. If this is the first time you've caught an episode of First Chapter Fun, this is what it's about. Every day until March the... no, sorry, until May the 6th, I read the first chapter of a new book daily at 11.30 Eastern Time. So here we are, this is episode 16, would you believe? And today I am reading from Molly Fader's upcoming novel that publishes on June the 9th and is called The Bitter and Sweet of Cherry Season. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, Katie uh, and uh, Melanie and Danny. We have lots of people online already. That's fantastic. So this and Molly should be joining us any minute now. So this is her novel. This is her second women's fiction novel, but she is actually the author of drumroll about fifty books. Yes, you heard me right. Five zero fifty books. So. Last year, Molly wrote uh, the McAvoy Sisters Book of Secrets, and this year, that was women's fiction again, and this year's women's fiction is the, the one I'm reading from, The Bitter and Sweet of Cherry Season. Now, her other books, um, she, so her women's fiction books are under Molly Fader, but she has written um, tons, I mean, 50 romance books, and some of the steamiest stuff too, as Molly O'Keefe, that's the romance, or M. O'Keefe, that's the steamy stuff. So yeah, she's a USA Today best-selling author and 50 novels, and she lives also in the greater Toronto area. And we did a brilliant event last year that was hosted by our publisher, we have the same publisher, for International Women's Day, and the two of us gave a presentation and I'll make sure to find the link and add it to the Facebook video once once I've located it. So um, let me tell you a bit more about the bitter and sweet of cherry season. I will show you the book cover again before I get stuck in. There we go. Hi Stina, hi Era. Wonderful for you to join. So this is the one we're reading from today. Publishes June the 9th. So this is the blurb, the book blurb for the bitter and sweet. Oh, hey, Molly's with us. Hey, Molly, how are you doing? She's just written a message. Hannah, hi, Molly. So glad you found me. Um, so Molly, of course, is with us here on Facebook. You can uh, add some questions, add some comments. Please, please um, do so because authors love engaging with, with readers and Molly's wonderful and hilarious and one of the the funniest and most warm people I think I've ever met. So do leave her a note, she'll really appreciate it. Okay, so let me get started with the blurb for The Bitter and Sweet of Cherry Season. Three generations of women come together at the family orchard to face secrets from the past and learn to believe in the power of hope and forgiveness. In Cherry Season, anything is possible. Everything Hope knows about the orchard house is from the stories of her late mother. So when she arrives at the Northern Michigan family estate late one night with a terrible secret and her 10 year old daughter in tow, she's not sure if she'll be welcomed or turned away with a shotgun by the aunt she has never met. Hope's aunt, Peg, has lived in the orchard house all her life, though the property has seen better days. She agrees to take Hope in if, in exchange, Hope helps out with the cherry harvest. Not exactly Hope's speciality, but she's out of options. As Hope works the orchard alongside her aunt, daughter and a kind man she finds increasingly difficult to ignore, a new life begins to blossom. But the mistakes of the past are never far behind, and soon the women will find themselves fighting harder than ever for their family roots and for each other. So again, this is The Bitter and Sweet of Cherry Season by Molly Fader, the one and only. I have to take my glasses off or I can't see what I'm doing. There we go, there's that lovely, lovely cover. For those of you who have just joined, Molly wrote the McAvoy Sisters Book of Secrets. This was last year's book. This is this year's book. 
but she's written, as I mentioned earlier, 50 books. I'm, I'm just going to go and get my coat and leave, frankly. 50 books um, as Molly O'Keefe and M. O'Keefe. The raunchy stuff is M. O'Keefe, so make sure you check that out too. All right, so let me entertain you with the first chapter of The Bitter and Sweet of Cherry Season by Molly Fader. Chapter one, hope. Night up in northern Michigan was no joke. Hope had never seen a dark so dark. It had heft and dimension, like she was driving right into an abyss. She thought about waking up Tink in the back to show her, but the girl had finally fallen asleep about 40 miles ago and she needed the rest. And Hope needed a break. Tink hadn't spoken to her since yesterday at the gas station. Who knew travelling with a completely silent, angry and traumatised ten-year-old could be so... exhausting? Hope's phone had died when she got off the highway about 20 minutes ago. In those last few minutes of battery, she'd tried to memorise the directions. Left on Murray Street, slight right onto County Road 72, your destination is five miles on the right. But County Road 72 wasn't well marked, and now she feared she was lost. Well, for sure she was lost. In the grand scheme of things, she was totally off the map. But she was clinging to the one ratty thread of hope she had left in her hand. And then, just as that tiny bit of thread started to slip out of her fingers, from the murk emerged a blue sign. County Road 72. The road took a long arcing right into the dark and she unrolled her window, trying to keep herself awake. Adrenaline and gas station coffee could only do so much against two sleepless nights. Her yawn was so wide it split her lip. Again. Copper tasting blood pooled in her mouth. Shit, she breathed and pressed the last of the napkins against her mouth. She was even out of napkins. In the back, Tink woke up. It wasn't that she alerted Hope with a sound or a quiet, grumpy, Mommy. Hope realised her daughter woke up because it felt like there was a sudden cold wind blowing from the back of the car. Hey, Hope said, looking over her shoulder into the shadows of the back seat. Her daughter's pale face, like a moon, slid into the space between the driver and passenger seats. We're almost there, Hope said making it sound like they were about to drive up to the gates of Disney World. Tink rubbed her eyes. Did you see the stars? Hope asked, her voice climbing into that range she'd recently developed. Dementedly cheerful, Stepford Mum on helium. She winced at the sound of it. That wasn't her. It wasn't how she talked to Tink. And yet, she couldn't tune her voice back to normal. There are so many of them. I don't think I've ever seen so many stars. Tink ducked her head to look out the windshield and then turned to cock her head at an angle so she could look out the passenger windows. Aren't those pieties? Hope got the name wrong on purpose, hoping for a snotty toned correction from her ten-year-old or at least a throat clearing scoff. But nope. Silence. Sooner or later you're going to have to talk to me, she said. You're going to open that mouth and all the words you haven't said all day are going to come pouring out. Silence. I mean, I'm sure you have questions. They were, after all, heading deep into northern Michigan to a place she and Tink had never been and Hope had never told her about. Tink rub rubbed her eyes. I'm sorry, Hope said. When you're older, you'll understand. When you're a mum, you'll understand. She wanted to say that to her daughter, but she herself barely understood any of what had happened the last two days, except the one thing that was completely clear. I messed up, Hope said. I'm so sorry. Still, silence. Hope tried a different angle. I'm telling you, Tink. I know you. I know you, and you can't keep this up much longer. I bet you ten bucks you say something to me in five, four, three... Two, she pulled in a breath that tasted like tears and blood. Please, honey, please. One, she sighed. Fine, you win. 
Her beat-up hatchback bounced over the uneven asphalt and Tink crawled from the back seat into the front, her elbow digging into Hope's shoulder, her flip-flopped foot kicking her in the thigh. The degree of parenting it would take to stop Tink from doing that, or to discuss the potential dangers and legality of it, was completely beyond her. She was beyond pick your battles into some new kind of Wild West motherhood. Pretend there were no battles. Ahead, there was a golden halo of light over the trees along the side of the road, and hope slowed down. A gravel driveway snaked through the darkness, and she took it on faith that it had been five miles. This is it. Please let this be it. The driveway opened up, and there was a yellow brick two-storey house. The orchard house. That was what Mum called it in the few stories she told about growing. She told about growing up here. Actually, the words she'd used were the goddamn orchard house. It was a grand, old-fashioned place with second-story windows, like dark eyes staring down at them. White gingerbread nestled up in the corners of the roof, and there was a big, wide porch and rocking chairs where she tried to imagine her mum as a girl, drinking lemonade, chatting in the evening. Yeah, no, she couldn't see it. Mum wasn't a sit-on-the-porch kind of woman. Sitting inside with the curtains drawn, drinking room temperature white wine, smoking stolen cigarettes, saying something funny, but cut so deep you didn't realise you were bleeding until the next day. That was more Denise Wright's style. The car rolled to a stop and Hope put it in park. Her maniacal new voice failed her and she just sat there, silent. Suddenly the front door opened and a dog, a big one with big teeth, came bounding out. Cujo stopped at the top of the steps and started barking. Behind the dog came a woman in a blue robe carrying a shotgun. Tink made a high panicked sound in her voice, climbing up in her seat. Hope's impulse was to turn the car around and get out of there too. The problem was, there was nowhere to turn around to. They had no place left to go. It's okay, honey, Hope lied. She went as far as to put her hand over Tink's bony knee, the knob of it fitting her palm like a baseball. Everything's going to be all right. More desperate than brave, Hope popped open the door. The dog's bark, unmuffled by steel and glass, was honest to God, blood curling. Hi, she yelled, trying to be both cheerful and loud enough to be heard over the barking. Get your hands up, the woman on the porch yelled. Hope shoved her hands up through the crack between the door and the car and did a kind of jazz hands with her fingers. What do you want? the woman asked. Are you Peg? I can't hear you! She stood up, her head reaching up over the door. Are you Peg? Never mind me, who the hell are you? She pointed the business end of the gun toward them. Hope quickly sidestepped away from the car door and Tink reached across the driver's seat and slammed it shut. The heavy thud of the engaged lock was unmistakable. You don't know me. No shit. My name is Hope, she said. The gun lowered and the woman's face changed from anger to something more careful. Hope? Yeah, I'm Denise's girl. I'm, well, you're my aunt. That was... The Bitter and Sweet of Cherry Season, Chapter One, by Molly Fader, who is just the most fabulous author. So this comes out on June the 9th, but don't worry because you can already pick up the McAvoy Sisters Book of Secrets, Molly's last book, or any one of her other 50 books, 50 books, that she's written, um, not as Molly Fader, these are the women's fiction ones, but uh, as Molly O'Keefe or M O'Keefe for the saucy stuff. So that was first chapter fun today. I hope you enjoyed that. Please do go and check 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 out Molly's uh, work. And for tomorrow, tomorrow I will be reading another thriller. This is Samantha Downing's. He started it. This will be tomorrow's book. So as always, I will post this video on Instagram, uh, certainly in my story if I can in my feed, and definitely on Facebook as well. Go ask Molly some questions, go engage with her, go, go check out her books. 
and uh, hopefully you'll tune in again for another episode of First Chapter Fun. Until then, stay safe, stay kind, and I'll see you tomorrow.